I'm sure more of you will join in, but if you're watching this after the fact, hello and welcome and thank you for watching. So, my name is Elise, I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painter Brush & Co. We are located at 37 High Street Eagle Hawk in Bendigo, Victoria, and you can find us online at thepainterbrush.com.au. This morning is a last minute live, but I didn't actually have anything prepared and then I was thinking late last night, what if I glazed this clock? So I, it's huge, this clock is huge. Um, and I was just sort of, I'll show you how big it is, because it is really big. It's massive, it's beautiful and it's massive. So I've painted it with Pure Eco Silk Finish in the color Inkwell, which is their dark navy. Really, really beautiful color. I've been dying to use it. At one point there, I was using navy blue constantly. Nearly every piece was had some sort of navy blue on it. Um, but I've barely touched it for like the last two years and I've been dying to do it again. I've got my hands on this clock. It is gorgeous. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to paint it navy. I love the color. So it was this red color before, inside and out. Um, but it was pretty, but it wasn't like, wow. So it was just a bit, I don't know. It just wasn't as nice as what I think it could have been. So that's why we've painted it with Silk Finish Navy. So to give you an idea of coverage, I had a 50 mil sample pot. It had maybe 10 mil already gone. So about 40 mil left. And I've used about half that. So this whole clock's taken about 20 mil, two coats. Um, amazing coverage i just used i didn't use this brush but just used a regular brush and brushed it on it is self settled itself um really really nice shine to the finish as well which i love the silk finish i really really enjoy the finish on it um and for prep all i did it's metal all i did was um scruff sand and clean really well just to make sure it was a little bit it was a little bit grubby but it wasn't too bad and then I'm just gonna try and bring it. Can you see the crackle? So it's got that false, um, that faux crackle uh, that we see a lot of this sort of style um, have. It's quite nice and I do like it and I don't wanna lose it completely. So today we're going to use Pure Eco Stain and Glaze in the color Whisper, which is their white. We're going to use that on this clock. I want to highlight that crackle just a little bit. I want to um, just add a little bit more detail. For me, a moment, despite that, which you can really only see that crackle when you're up close to it. It's feeling very flat. It's feeling a little bit dull, although it's gorgeous. It just needs a bit of oomph. So we're going to go in with the stain and glaze. So, I've showed you the stain and glaze a lot. It is by far, dare I say it, my favorite product in the entire range. I absolutely love it. Every piece of timber um, that I have on a piece of furniture or decor, etc., has got stain and glaze on it. Um, I absolutely love this product. It is water-based, it's eco-friendly. It is insanely easy to use. Um, so I've showed you it a lot on timber. But I think I've only ever shown you it once over paint because it is a glaze as well as a stain. So the stain is for timber. The glaze part of it is to go over paint. So I've showed you it once and I've shown you it over chalk paint. And I'll actually grab the iron. So this was, I think, just before Christmas. When, I'm sure I showed you how to do it just before Christmas when I did it. So this is stain and glaze um, in the color Midnight, which is the black, over Cloud, which is uh, chalk finish. Um, and it's like a gray white. It's very, it's a really, really beautiful white actually. This, this is the white. Oh, that light's bouncing off that really bad. So it's like a gray white, really beautiful. So this is Midnight over that. Now, when you use stain and glaze over chalk paint, chalk paint is porous and it will drink that in so and that's what's happened that's why it is really it's gone really great yes you've still got your bits of black etc but it has really drunk that in whereas silk finish has a built-in top coat which means it's not going to drink that in the stain and glaze instead is just going to sit on the surface which is 
Perfect, that's what I want for this. I don't want this to become really, really white. Um, so I don't want it to be drinking it in. So I am glad that I have painted it with silk finish so that the glaze will just sit over the top. It will sink into all the little crackle, but it won't be really, really heavy, which is what we're after. So, super easy to use. You can use a sponge applicator. I use a sponge applicator on pretty much everything. Um, I think on the bell, I actually used a brush. It's got a lot more detail. This has also got some detail too. It's got ooh, the top piece as well. So I'm going to use a brush today just to make sure that I get the stain and glaze everywhere that I want it. Um, but you can absolutely use a sponge applicator as well. For a brush, I'm just using one of our 38 mil. These are our um, cheaper brushes. I think they're like $10. They're a really nice brush, um, very well made. The bristles can fall out a little bit, so not ideal for like lots and lots of painting, but perfect for this. And it fits in my tub really, really well. So the last thing you need is a some sort of clean, a clean rag, clean cloth. You just don't want it full of lint, etc., because you don't want that getting stuck in your um, glaze. Now, I could also be doing this with wax. Wax, though, over silk finish. Although it works, it doesn't work as well. Uh, silk finish with a top coat prevents the wax from soaking in, which is what, what wax likes to do. It needs to soak in. Um, the beeswax polish cannot be used over silk finish. It will just sit there and it will slide. It needs to soak in in order to do its thing. You can use liquid wax over silk finish. Um, and it has got a drying agent in, so it will dry, but it, again, it won't soak in. So, look, liquid wax would give me the same sort of finish, but I really like stain and glaze for this finish. Um, because it will dry, same as the liquid wax, application is the same, you wipe it, you put it on, you take it off. Um, but I'm using the stain and glaze because I do prefer the finish of stain and glaze over uh, the silk finish. So this is Whisper, and all I'm gonna do, you don't need heaps, I'm just gonna take it out of the lid a little bit, and I'm actually gonna come around. Now this is like the one of the most awkward things to actually show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm just gonna drop the camera just a little bit, because, sorry, one leg at a time. Let me get that side too, how are we looking? That a bit better. All right, so for those who just joined us, this is Silk Finish Inkwell. It has got this really nice crackle. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a really nice crackle in there. It's not super deep, so we're going to be applying, let me sit you there, applying some Whisper Stain and Glaze to it. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna wipe it on. And I like brushes for detail as well, because you can really just push it in there. Does not matter which direction you wipe it in. Oops. You wipe it on rather. You can already see it's as it's sinking into all those little cracks there. Now, you do, stain and glaze does dry really quickly. I'm just making sure I get that inside rim as well. It does dry really quickly. So you do want to work in smaller sections. You can reactivate it with some water, just a spray bottle. And all you're then going to do is you're going to wipe your cloth over and remove that very surface. And I like to use a cloth that's just going to Can you see that crackle happening? Hang on. Can you see the crackle now? How beautiful is that? So it is going to, not so much dull, but it is going to soften the blue just a little bit, which I, I don't mind at all. And you can just keep moving um, the stain and glaze until you're really happy with it. So, and you can apply multiple coats as well. So we're just gonna work our way around the cloth.
just matching up that bit where I and I'm just taking it back and forth a few times to make sure it gets into all those little grooves I'm just trying to balance it on my counter it sort of fits about the same on my little table so I thought well, I'll save myself a job today and just use the counter Alright, so once you've wiped it on, again taking your cloth. And you can paint straight over the top of this as well. Um, that's another benefit to using the stain glaze versus wax. Wax, you have to remove the wax. Stain and glaze, you can go straight over the top. So if you decide that you don't like it, you can just keep on going. I can paint a single coat of the um, inkwell straight over the top, and then we'd have a really beautiful. Oh, I'm gonna lose the whole thing. Just like that. So you just keep going around. Is it gonna stay? It's gonna stay. All right, so I'm just gonna come up to this little bit here. I should have gone there to begin with, but just do that a little bit and then I'll do this top bit and I'll bring you in a bit closer. So again, you don't have to leave it on there for any amount of time. You can just take it off straight away. Um, there's no need to wait. If you wait, it's just going to dry and it's going to be harder to, to move around and to manipulate. So if you just um, do it straight away, you're going to have more ease of use and see how it's just brought out that crackle really really gently now see how I've got like a bit of a line happening here all I'm going to do and I'm going to show you this let me grab my bottle so so this is our Mr. Bottles so really fine, continuous mist. They're $14 and I'm just very gently, and you've got heaps of control with these as well. Very gently going to mist that over my surface and then wipe. And all that's doing is it's reactivating that stain and glaze so I can keep it moving. Beautiful. All right, let's do this top bit. All right, so I love the top of this clock. So I don't want stacks. I'm gonna get it up in here. Again, it doesn't matter what direction you're painting as long as you're getting the glaze on. So if this was chalk finish, it would be drinking all of that stain and glaze in and you'd have a lot more white left over when you were done. So just like that, we come back in with our cloth again. Remember to keep rotating your cloth as well. This is a old pillowcase. Um, pillowcases are fantastic, like the, just the cotton pillowcases. Just keep rubbing and manipulating that until it's sort of all where you want it to be. I'm just going to get sort of the edge of my cloth and get it down into that bit there. This top bit actually needs to be tightened a little bit. It's come loose the last couple of days while I've been working on it because I've been holding it by that a lot. So that will actually tighten. Can you really see that crackle coming through? It's quite beautiful. I just wanted it really, I want the softness 
but I want that detail as well. So by doing it like this, I'll turn that because I cannot see what I'm doing. It's just allowing me to, I'm just gonna let that sit for a second. So all I did then was removed a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a second and start to dry. Let's do this top section. Now I am going to do all of this as well. This has all been crackled as well. Now, if this didn't have the crackle on it, I could absolutely go in with Purico's crackle finish, which I haven't used in a really long time, but I need to find something to use it on because I do want to do a video on it for you. It's really fun to use and it creates the same sort of crazy crackling as well. Now I'm just sort of going to get the back of that handle a little bit, even though you won't see it, it will be up against the wall. I still like to make sure it's nice and finished all the way around. All right, so just sort of wiping that on. And you really don't use much of your glaze at all. It goes a really, really long way and you really only need a little bit of it. All right, so once that's on, let's get this side first. How are we looking? Beautiful. All right, and then we'll do all of this. So you do need to wipe off the excess, otherwise you're just gonna see all those brush marks as well. But once it's dry, you can go through and reapply it if you like as well and do a second coat. You could apply a different color on it. You can even mix the colors, which I've done quite a few times as well, just sort of create your own custom color. So there's, is it six or seven colors? One, two, three, four. There's seven colors in the main range, going from the white through to a black. And then there's five specialty colors, which include a blue, a red, a purple. Um, there's a pink. There's two blues actually. What's the other one? And purple. So they're really beautiful as well. I've used, oh, I might not have posted it yet. I've done a really cute little jewelry box, which I use the pink in and I love it. It's a really pretty color. So you've got the other colors as well, which would be brilliant for something like this when you're just glazing more than staining. I wouldn't necessarily stain a piece blue, but I would absolutely use it as a glaze to add that bit of extra color and detail in. So just like that. Now you may notice when you're glazing as well, it can feel a little bit tacky and sticky. That's just while it's drying. So don't panic, that's normal. Just wait for it to do its thing and dry. Once it's dry, it um, won't be tacky anymore. It will just do its thing. What do we think? That looks pretty good. I'm loving the detail that we've now, we're now achieving. I'm just sort of reducing some of that white in those crevices just a little bit more because I feel like it's a bit much still. There we go. All right, halfway, let's do the other side. Oh, we're not gonna balance too well there. Doesn't get any better. <laughs> it's too big for everything, this block. I think I might even hang it above the fireplace in here in the studio. So if you've got questions, let me know. Uh, today I am open 10 till five. It's our last day before Easter holidays. I'm going to be taking about a week off. We are going camping and I haven't really shared our caravan that I've renovated yet, but I'm excited to share that with you all as well in the next few 
or probably next week I'll share that once we've got it out there and send some share some little pictures of what's happening or what I did with it so just like that the link for the stain and glaze is in the description of this post as well for you if you're looking for it otherwise you'll just find it in the menu on our website underneath stain and glaze look at that isn't that beautiful it's not re it's really hard to capture this on the live it's such an awkward piece to do as well um but I will put it all back together in a little while once this is dry and um, I'll snap some photos and post them because it is really nice. So I actually brought this for our own house. We, at some point, will be renovating. So I brought it for that, but in the meantime, I have to find somewhere to store it <laughs> and it won't actually fit anywhere in my house right now so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it it might just hang out here for a bit I might even put it up for sale and if it doesn't sell then it's not a big deal but I don't know it might need to be in here for a little bit just because it shows off the product so well so a section at a time is the easiest way to do this just because it does dry so quickly you could do it all over but then you'd spend more time just reactivating the product and I'm loving the variation that I'm getting as well so if I rub it that little bit harder in some spots I'm getting that little bit more detail as well so there is a join just here um, just where the outside rim has been put together so I just don't want that to be super super obvious it's the only one there is on here so I'm just going to go really easy and not apply too much just there just because I don't want that to be like all you see on the piece and we're now matching up with the original spot where we started so I'm just brushing it up and matching that I'm just gonna rub it that little bit more along that join just so there's not heaps of glaze sitting there and just here on the join I'm just gonna pop a little tiny bit of water to sort of help move that glaze just a little bit Gonna give that a second. I need my hair dry. Just to start drying and soaking in a little bit. Just really gently. There we go. Beautiful. So this is so pretty. Let me There it is, all finished. Let me, oh, it's actually heavier than what you think it is to move the camera back a bit so I've got some room to work. So you can see the crackle now, whereas before when I showed you, it was really, really hard to see. But now you can see it and it's just, it's really soft. It's really subtle, but it's there. And it's enough now that you can sort of see it from the distance. So I've missed a tiny little bit of blue paint there of the ink glass. So I'm just gonna touch that up afterwards, which, and that's the beauty of using the stain glaze. You can just paint straight over it. 
Um, so if you find, and I always do, if you find a piece that you've missed, it's super easy to touch that up. Isn't that beautiful? All right, well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much. Oh, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you all have a really happy and safe Easter. All the uh, products that we've used, the brush, the, um, what's this called? The Mister bottle and the stain and glaze, they're all on my website. And um, I hope you have a go at using the stain and glaze as a glaze. It's really, really beautiful. And if you haven't used it at all yet, use it on some timber as well because it's well worth it. It's so beautiful, um, so easy to use. And if you ever have any questions, I'm always here and um, I'm always happy to help as well. And um, yeah, so I will pop this video up on my YouTube as well and I will link it into the description on my website as well for the stain and glaze so you can find it for easy reference in the future. Have a wonderful Easter, have a wonderful uh, Thursday and I will see you all in our next live. Bye everyone.